So now I want to begin with a very special and interesting and beautiful story of a young man who was a Sahabi, a companion. He was a teenager and he was about 16 years old. I chose this particular compa companion because I want to talk about the teenagers and then relate it to how us as parents and in the community, should, we need to look after our teenagers. This particular teenager's name was Abu Mahdura. You know, the Arabs, they always use the Abus a lot. So he had a nickname called Abu Mahdura. And the Arabs in those days used to create men out of youngsters at an early age by calling them a name of respect. So to say Abu Mahdura, or if it was a girl, Ummu Mahdura, you're making out of young people, teenagers, adults. You're making them more mature just by giving them a mature and respectful name. This young man, Abu Mahdura, however, still had the teenage characteristics. As you all know, teenagers, their front part of their brain is still growing. It's called the prefrontal cortex. And it's responsible for decision making, rationale, right and wrong, uh, motivation, making decisions. It's still growing until 25. So he was what we call a fata or a ghulam. And in the Arabic language, a ghulam or a fata is someone from the age of puberty all the way till about 19 or even to 25. The hadith is, uh, is in Al-Nasa'i and Ibn Majah and Ahmad and it's an authentic hadith. This young man, Abu Mahdura, he is the one who narrates to us his story. And he says, I lived in Mecca and my parents are from Mecca and I was still a disbeliever at that time. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had left Mecca to go on a battle called the Battle of Hunayn. And we thought he was out of Mecca. So he lived in Medina, but we thought he's not nowhere around in Mecca. And as you know, the Muslims had reconquered Mecca and they were the authority and the government of Mecca. And the Prophet وسلم, was merciful and kind and compassionate. We know the story of how he treated the enemies who fought him. He freed them and told them, nothing will harm you. You are free when he entered. But unfortunately, there were people who still had hatred to the Prophet ﷺ just because they don't like the Islam or they have heard bad things about Islam and they've got this idea. Like what we have today, people make all sorts of comments about Muslims and Islam and our Prophet ﷺ without really knowing much, only surface knowledge and hatred. So brothers and sisters, this young man had hatred to the Prophet ﷺ and he particularly had, had hatred to the Adhan. The Adhan is the call to prayer. Why? Because it's loud. And we call five times a day. Maybe this young man wanted to go to sleep in the morning and didn't want to hear the adhan. He says, as we were walking towards Mecca, with a, he says, with a group of, of my friends who were teenagers as well, 15, 16, the Prophet ﷺ had entered Mecca and we didn't know. And it was time for salat in the daytime and he said to one of his mu'addins to call the adhan. When the mu'addin called the adhan in Mecca, he said, my friends and I began to tease and mock the Adhan. We started to mimic it and raise our voices, making all sorts of noises. My friends started to tease the Adhan, tease the way they say Allahu Akbar. You can imagine. And he said, my voice was the loudest and stood out among them. And I had a nice voice. I had a clear, loud voice. And I also teased and mocked the Adhan and started mimicking it. As we approached, the Prophet ﷺ heard us. And so he sent, one of, he sent his companions to us to grab us and bring us to him. He said, go get me those teenagers who are mimicking the Adhan. He said he brought us and we all had to come in and we were caught. Obviously, they're the authority. He said, when I stood in front of the Prophet wasallam, looking at him, I couldn't look at his face. He had such an aura and what we call haybah. It's hard to look at the Prophet wasallam's face. You have to respect him. He said, I thought he was going to kill us. Literally, because they've just come from the battlefield and they've still got their swords. And they're the authority mocking his religion. He's going to kill us. Or he's going to punish us or do something bad. He said, he came up to us and he said to all of us, which one of you was raising his voice the most? He said, all my friends pointed to me. <laughs> they threw me under the bus. They snitched on me. He said, but it was true. My voice was the loudest and mine reached the furthest. So the Prophet ﷺ said to my friends, okay, all of you go away. He didn't say a single bad word to them, just, all right, just go and leave me with this 
Abu Mahdhura. He said, come here, Abu Mahdhura. He said to him, were you the one with the loud voice? He said, yes. He said, I found your voice impressive. It's actually very nice. You have a talent, young man. And he smiled to him. The boy thought to himself, I didn't expect that. They told me he's a bad man. The Prophet ﷺ then, he said, he took a little bag and gave it to me. I looked in the bag and it had some silver coins. You'll know why soon. And then he said to me, I want you to repeat after me these words. So basically he gave him the silver coins because it meant I want a favor back. Now, this for that. Because the Prophet ﷺ knew that he hated the Adhan and he doesn't want to say it. So the Prophet ﷺ wants to be fair to him and say here is a bag of coins. And it's also a gesture that he's thinking of employing him if he passes the test. So he says to him, repeat after me, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He said, he says, you've got to raise your voice the way you were doing it before. So he raised his voice really nice. Then he went through the entire Adhan one by one until he finished it. And he said, I memorized the Adhan the way the Prophet taught me with my, with my loud and, and far reaching distinctive voice. And then he put his hand on my forehead here. I had a bit of hair on my forehead and he put it on my forehead. And then he wiped my forehead and then wiped my face gently. Then he wiped my chest and my heart. And then he wiped my, where my liver is and then across to my stomach and left me. And he said to me, Barakallahu feek wa burikt. May Allah bless through you and may Allah make you a blessing. And then I left. He said, when I left, I went to think about what the Prophet ﷺ said. And I came back and asked him about Islam. And my love for this man, he, wallahi, he was the most hated person to me in the world. After that moment, he became the most beloved to me in that world. And the Adhan was the most hated to me. After that, it became the most beloved to me. And I said to him, I bear witness that there is only one God worthy of worship. And you are his messenger. O oh, Messenger of Allah, are you trying to employ me? Is that why you gave me the bag? And he said, yes. Do you take the offer? He said, yes, I do. He says, I've employed you as the main mu'addin of Mecca. And truly, Abu Mahdura accepted the job and he became the authority mu'addin of Mecca. There were four. Bilal was from Adina and he was from Mecca. The other two I forgot, but... Abu Mahdura was known throughout Islamic history. He was the fourth Mu'addin of Mecca and he died when he was 59 years old, all that time. Now, brothers and sisters, this incident by itself tells us so much about how to treat our teenagers and youngsters. So many lessons, but I'll just say two of them. Number one, Rasul did not judge him or reprimand him. He knew that he's a teenager still learning. Instead, he employed his talent and made it known in front of everybody that you have a talent. And that's one of the ways you can deal with your children and your relatives, as if you're a teacher, for example, with your students, if they're teenagers. Find a skill in them, even if they're silly, and bring them and say, if, you, if you've got talent and you're able to be creative, brothers and sisters, you can employ the talents of your children, especially if they're teenagers, and make it shine so that they can feel valuable and special. Everybody has a talent. Grab it, manifest it, and employ it. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ did with this teenager.